My name is Rosanna Yun, as he said, and uh, my talk is a look behind the curtain. A quick introduction. Um, if you don't know who I am, I am the Director of Operations for the Gnome Foundation. Uh, this means that I am your employee. Uh, I work for, I'm the, currently the only employee for the Gnome Foundation, but I'm hoping that will change soon. Um, I, we used to have an executive director, and we are hoping to have one again soon. Um, part of my job is to provide continuity for the board. Uh, the board of directors, obviously, elections every year, so there is a lot of change, and I am always there to tell them when things have happened a few years ago and we've tried things and give them a historical perspective. Um, I, something else I do, which is extremely important, is to maintain our 501c3 status. Uh, that is our nonprofit status, and there are a lot of hoops to go through because it's a government thing, and obviously government equals more paperwork. Um, I provide the financials in and outs. That means I invoice, I make sure we're collecting our money, and I make sure we pay our bills. Uh, and with the... Uh, and I try and fill in any gaps or niches that need doing um, with the executive director currently unfilled. I've been finding myself doing a lot more things, hence my joining the engagement team and also why I'm here today, right now on stage. Uh, what, what is the GNOME Foundation? It's um, 501c3. It's not that it's a... It's a pretty rare thing in free software to have a 501c3. Um, we treasure it, we maintain it, we want to keep it. It's very important. Um, it's why uh, we, we provide... Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, blah. The 501c3, yes, it allows us to accept money, uh, donations from both companies and individuals in a tax-free manner if you are from the US, you can also deduct your donations. Um, part, of, uh, part and parcel of this is that we promise to use this money only for charitable purposes and uh, in a manner that represents public interest, as it says, and also fulfills our mission as the GNOME Foundation. Um, we are a legal entity, which means that we can hold property like our trademark, and that way we have, uh, uh, that's why we have uh, all those, like Alan was yesterday saying how we have all those uh, contracts with uh, companies so that we can keep protecting our trademark. Uh, the foundation itself is defined in our bylaws, which you can find on our website. Uh, it's a long document, and it's a living document. We do tweak it on a regular basis, uh, and if th when there are changes, we vote on them in the ADM, so uh, you know that there were no changes this past year. Um, most importantly, the Gnome Foundation uh, reflects the wishes of the community and does not drive them, so we work for you guys. Um, if you guys uh, feel think that the foundation isn't doing what you want them to do, you should let us know because we're not mind readers. Uh, structure of the GNOME Foundation. The uh, board of directors is seven people of whom you met yesterday at the AGM. Um, they're all my bosses. So as you can imagine, it's tough having seven bosses, but they're wonderful people. I love them all. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, but it, it, if, if you, you think about it, it's harder for them because they have several hundred bosses, which is the entire foundation. So if you think about it, we're all trying to help each other uh, advance the Grenome project in a better way. Uh, the board also oversees and empowers uh, com teams and committees to do, uh, do things that the board cannot do by, on their own. Uh, if, you were at the AGM yesterday, you saw all those uh, teams and committees giving presentations. The board prov provides oversight over them and empowers them and, to, and gives them the power to actually do what they need to do. Uh, let's see. The finances. Uh, those are four things. 
I work very closely with the treasurer, obviously, um, because the treasurer is Kat right now. Oh, she's not here right now, but uh, she's been our treasurer for a few years, and it's wonderful to have a treasurer who ha is, has been around for a bit because that way we can work together and make sure that the books are in order and it's, I don't have to teach a new treasurer how our books are run. Um, we have a bookkeeper that I go to annually uh, to help file our taxes. Um, he specializes in nonprofit tax uh, filing, so, um, and it's great because he is willing to start new cash up once a year for me. I mean, how rare is that? <laughs> PayPal. Um, a lot of you uh, probably know that PayPal is how we accept most of our donations. It is a thing. Um, I struggle with PayPal on a daily basis. Uh, it's becoming increasingly harder to figure out how to get the PayPal data into GNU Cash, which is where I keep our books. Um, I'm actually struggling with that right now, and I'm hoping to figure that out in the next few days. Uh, GNU Cash, I this picked it when I first started working on, at GNOME because it was the free software, money management software. Um, and I've learned a lot from it. And it's, uh, well, it's free software, so <laughs> it's good. It could be a lot better. Taxes. This is a list of the taxes that I could remember before I talk about uh, that we need to file. Um, you notice there's a bunch that are done yearly and quarterly. The quarterly ones are payroll taxes. So if you notice, there's ones under state. That's because I'm in California, and that's what I, where I file the California state taxes. When we get a new executive director, if they're located in the U.S., there will be more forms because we need one for every state, unless they're based in, Mass in uh, California as well. Um, these taxes need to be filed regularly, and uh, is a very important part of maintaining our 501c3. Funny story, not so funny story. About a month ago, I got a letter from the state of California saying, where have your taxes forms, your RRF ones from the past 10 years been? And I said, we've been mailing them in. And they said, we don't care if you've been mailing them and we can't find them. So send them again. So not fun. I got it done. But occasionally I disappear because I have to f do things like that. Um, new cash. These are some screenshots I took of our uh, assets, income, and expenses. Uh, those are our file structures for them. If you notice, I, there, but if I expanded them, it wouldn't fit on the screen. Um, if you notice, a lot of these categories align with the financial. is not pretty. Um, it also has way too many categories that we don't need. Um, uh, so I don't use them. I create the invoice in GNU Cash, and then I copy the data into a template that I created way back when in Abbey Word, which I then converted to an open office template, and now I use LibreOffice. But um, it would be great. I've been told that this is something that can be um, fixed uh, by someone who knows how to do scripting, but that's not me. So if anyone wants to look into GNU Cash and make a prettier invoice for me so I don't have to duplicate my work, I'd really appreciate it. Other financial stuff. Budgeting process with Treasurer. The Treasurer uh, the, the, creates the budget, and I've just been trying uh, doing the making sure it's uh, reporting it and putting it in the right category so that she can make sure everything works well. Um, with 
Kat not being on the board this year, um, I expect that I will probably be working with her a little more closely to try and make sure that the budget is being followed. Um, other uh, Payroll insurance and other expenses. Uh, these are things that I do on a regular basis. I obviously payroll twice a month. And none of these, none of this can be automatic for some reason. I don't know why. They said automatic, but I still have to go in and push a button. Um, insurance, other expenses. I got a call earlier today about needing to renew our insurance. Um, we have like insurance with two different companies, and I need to keep track of what they are. Um, invoicing. I need to invoice people for advisory board fees and product sponsorships and other things like that. Um, the larger the company, the more onerous the uh, process is to get paid. Um, not surprising, they want to uh, make sure you're set up with their system correctly because the more bigger they are, the more complicated their system. And sometimes they even need it to be renewed regularly, which means I need to keep constant contact with someone inside the company. Travel and conferences. I love the travel committee. They're my favorite committee. Um, this is because I remember a time before they existed. Uh, uh, it used to be that the board did all of the vetting of every single request, and then my job was to make sure the receipts are all right and make sure they give me all the correct banking information. This was so much work. It took me two months to finish Guadic. That is a long time of me not doing anything else. So the travel committee is wonderful. They do a lot of this, and then they set it up for me to reimburse people. Um, and as you all know, reimbursements are done via either uh, PayPal, personal checks, or uh, bank wires. So a lot of you people I see are not US-based. Um, banking in the US is a little archaic. Uh, we use checks a lot. Um, I know you Europeans find that very strange, but checks are cheap. They're like to both write and to receive. If they're less than a dollar and usually free. Um, you can get them printed. Like you can buy a pack from Amazon to come of blank checks to print in your own home, so that you can make it as formal as you'd like. You can order checks from specialty companies. I've received checks that look like, um, that have kittens on them, or your favorite sports team. <laughs> Lots of really funny things. Um, but keep that in mind that that is something that can be done. Uh, the other reason we don't use wires is wiring, because I know you Europeans are, are always asking me, why don't we just use more wires? Wiring is expensive, complex, and time consuming. Um, outgoing wires cost $35 to, to uh, international and 17 for domestic. Sorry, I had to look up because they just raised their prices again. Um, incoming is $15 regardless of where it's coming from. So if you send me a $10 or send the GNOME Foundation a $10 donation via wire transfer, it's going to cost us money. That's happened. Uh, that is why there's a minimum right now of how much you... Uh, if you don't give me all your information when I send out your wire, or if it's incorrect, it gets sent out and then sits there somewhere. We don't know where. So we end up having to trace the wire, and that is a really expensive process. Um, but with all, and also, it's, uh, nowadays I can do it online, but a couple years ago I had to go sit in the bank and wait for them. I had to fill out a form. Go to the bank office branch, have them fill it in in a different form, so copy it over, and then they would call it in and verbally give all the information. And I had to sit there the entire time. Sending a wire was a pain. It is a lot easier now with uh, that there's an online uh, form, but we still need to make sure all the information is there. Um, for international wires, I grabbed this straight off the, uh, our bank website. We need all this information, um, and so if you, and sometimes for specific countries we need more information than that. So 
when the travel committee gives you this list of things you need to actually fill in, please fill it in. Otherwise, we're going to come back to you and say, I can't send the wire. The bank won't let me. Domestic wires. Remember when I said our bank, uh, US is archaic? We don't have I-bands. So we use ABA numbers, which are otherwise known as writing numbers. And if you see this, and you remember where I said earlier about how easy it is to print checks, this information, guess what you can do with it? You can print checks. That is why we have so much bank fraud and why we don't actually have our information out there on the internet or on our webpage anymore to receive domestic to receive wires. It is just too easy for uh, people with nefarious purposes to create fake checks and to uh, write them on our behalf. And I've had seen some very interesting signatures, forgeries. Um, we get calls on a regular basis still about people who say, we received a check for you from you. Um, did you send it? No, we did not send you a check for cleaning our house. It just didn't happen. Um, so, oops, how you can help. Uh, I think most of you are members of the Gnome Foundation, right? If anyone is not a member, except you two. Um, <laughs> If, if, if anyone is not a member, I expect you would to be a member by the time I see you next year's Guadic, right? Because you guys are obviously interested. Um, you should, and for those of you who are members and find any of this interesting or even feel like this is like important work, you should run for the board. Uh, the board of directors are wonderful people. They work really hard. There's turnover is on average, two years, and I'm always happy when they stay for longer. Um, but that means we need more people to step up and run for the board. Um, you can become a Friends of Gnome. You know, the, our website for donations. Um, and uh, also on that page, there are other ways you can uh, help out the Gnome Foundation. Um, you can fix GNU Cash. Uh, I obviously have some complaints about it, uh, and I'm happy to talk to you some more. I know that not everyone, very few people here probably work on GNU Cash. I don't actually know anyone who works on GNU Cash anymore. I used to, but uh, I do not anymore. And I would love to talk to you about some things I would improve. Um, and uh, that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Andreas. So with the fraudulent checks, like, I guess the, the bank that receives it, like, they always call and check, or did anyone ever succeed that you know of? Oh, <laughs> I had to go to, the first time it went through, I was in a panic because there were two, like, $5,500 checks that had gone through, and more coming. I went to the bank, and we... Uh, reversed all the charges, but the thing is, the person who uh, is cashing the check is also um, is tends to be not the person who wrote the check, obviously. So, you know, you don't really want them to go through. What we've done now is that um, we have two checking accounts: an outgoing account and an incoming account. Um, the incoming account cannot write checks. We blocked it from the ability to do that, and. Uh, but I mean, I go to the bank and they say, yeah, there's still checks trying to come through. So it's, and we do still get phone calls asking. So it's, it's still a, a, something that goes on on a regular basis, unfortunately. I have one more. Uh, <laughs> the um, the uh, chargers for wire transfers, do those also apply for things that come through PayPal? Or no, is it separate? PayPal is separate. PayPal okay. uh, has their own chart. We actually have a nonprofit status with PayPal, so we have lower rates than the average person, but I mean, they still exist. Uh, so, how much uh, does the bank uh, charge you if you do nothing for a month with your account? Um, as long as I have money in my account, they don't care. <laughs> um, actually, that's not totally true. They do charge. Um, it, 
it's under $100. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but I do think that if we maintain a, a, a decent balance across all our accounts, because like I just said, we have a, a few accounts just to be able to, for security purposes. Um, if we maintain a decent amount of money in there, which we, sh we can do, they um, don't mind, they don't charge us, but that's because we don't really get interest either. So they're happy for the money to sit there. So uh, I have a question, and um, that is that it sounds like um, US banking, as you said, is kind of archaic, and it sounds actually quite expensive. Um, has the foundation ever considered actually getting a European bank account, and what, what would that entail? We cannot. That's the short and simple answer. The IRS would look at that very badly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So, so one of the things we did at Conservancy was we put our accounts under analysis, uh, which uh, if you have enough money in your account, you can get a lot of things for free that aren't normally for free. Uh, given that you all have 350K, that should be enough to put your account under analysis and be able to get like wire transfers and so forth, at least a few of them per month yeah, for free. Yeah, I think we currently have either four or five transfers for free per month, but mm. we do we do them in fits and spurts. And so mm. either we don't do any one month or we do Guadic, right? So um, it's, it's, yeah, we do have some of that. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned how high the charges are from the bank if we send the wire transfer to the GNOME Foundation. Uh, you also mentioned that it's very easy for you to print checks. Does it work if we send a donation as a check? Yes. And you don't have fees um, on it? US checks are free. Uh, foreign checks are slightly more difficult, but we can still do deposit those. There is a fee with foreign checks. I don't remember what it is. We don't get them often enough. Um, so, on the behalf of the Board of Directors, I'd like to thank you for all your amazing work over the years, Rosanna. Like, we can do what we do without Rosanna. Like, it's, she's so important to, to the Foundation, so it's really important to appreciate everything she does. Um, and then just a small question. I was always kind of fascinated. What happens when someone mails something to the Gnome Foundation? <laughs> like I, in the post? Uh, it goes to a, a mailbox. I pick it up and it depends what it is. Um, if it's a check, I will deposit it and I, I will add their name to the Friends of Gnome page, donor, donor page. Um, usually the checks I get in the mail are for GIMP, actually. Uh, but... Uh, we do occasionally do get U.S. checks. Uh, other things, we don't seem, we get uh, donations of stamps on a regular basis by someone. It's sort of cool. <laughs> it's, it's great, though. <laughs> you <laughs> Could be. It's awesome. But yeah, I, I get first class stamps, so I use them. So I mean, it's useful. <laughs> Anyone else? If there are no other questions, thank you very much, Rosanna. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for getting up so early.